Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. The Age of the Pyramids is a subject that has been covered in depth on this channel and many others and although there is much discussion there does seem to be little agreement and even I continually change my opinion when analysing various pieces of evidence. Egyptologists Graham Hancock, Robert Beauval and I also believe Robert Schock are accepting of the claim that the Giza Pyramids are Old Kingdom, dynastic constructions built during the 4th Dynasty. Because as well as the debated evidence such as the Khufu graffiti in the relieving chambers of the Great Pyramid, Robert Beauval and Graham Hancock have also presented astronomical evidence and how the shafts of the Great Pyramid align with key constellations in the night sky around 4,700 years ago. The southern so-called air shafts point towards Orion and Sirius, two hugely important astronomical objects to the ancient Egyptians, whilst the northern shafts point to the circumpolar stars. The King's Chamber northern shaft lines up with one star specifically, and this one is known as Thuban, and this specific alignment has hit the news this week, just shy of 30 years after the claims were first made by Robert Beauval and Adrian Gilbert in their book The Orion Mystery. And this time it isn't being made by another alternative researcher, but it is being mentioned by academia. 4,700 years ago, around the time of the building of the Giza pyramids, according to conventional dating, Thuban was the pole star, the point which the stars in the night sky circle, and it makes sense that the Egyptians must have held Thuban in high regard. But as news reports show this week, Thuban is no ordinary star. Researchers have discovered that Thuban is actually a binary star, a small star and a large one. They circle one another and this is a new discovery for scientists at NASA. Due to their movement the stars eclipse one another, just like the sun and the moon as observed from Earth. Astronomers have never found any evidence that stars eclipse one another and scientists have also found out that they complete one full circle around each other every 51 days. Could the ancient Egyptians have known this? If we believe Beauval's theory of the star shafts, Thuban was immortalised inside the Great Pyramid, but it does seem highly unlikely that they knew its unusual binary properties due to the quality of telescopic instruments that was needed to view the phenomenon, unless of course the Great Pyramid had some as yet unknown astronomical observatory function. Maybe the Northern King's Chamber star shaft did have such a function, I honestly don't know, and wouldn't know where to begin with a hypothesis. The ancient pole star Thuban, now known as Alpha Draconis, is the primary star of the constellation of Draco. In ancient Egyptian mythology, Draco is represented by the hippo god Hezemut, which has a crocodile climbing on its back. This crocodile is what evolved into the serpent or dragon of the Greeks and Romans, and the Draco constellation does feature in a number of Greek myths. Some researchers think that the ancient Egyptians believe that Ptah sat on the great seat or throne that was located at the celestial polar axis, Ptah being the ancient creator god and god of craftsmen and architects and husband to the lioness goddess Sekhmet. So maybe the Egyptians identified the star Thuban with their important god Ptah. According to researchers, the last significant instance of when Thuban became the pole star happened in the year 2787 BC. It was the closest a star had come to the celestial polar axis in around 10,000 years, and some researchers believe that the Great Pyramid was built to commemorate this once in a lifetime celestial alignment. Khufu's reign came later, between 2609 to 2584 BC, yet the carbon dating work that was carried out on the Great Pyramid in the 1980s did give a date range between 3101 BC to 2853 BC, averaging at 2977 BC. They also took mortar from the Second Pyramid and this produced an average date of 2988 BC. In one of my very early videos, I once suspected that work on the Great Pyramid actually began at the beginning of dynastic history, and maybe could have been the brainchild of the first pharaoh of the first dynasty, the pharaoh known as Nama or Menes. 
And if the theory is correct, that the Great Pyramid was built to commemorate the astronomical events, then maybe work did begin before, in the build up to the conjunction of 2787 BC, work that was to honour the creator god Ptah. And who was Ptah's consort? The lioness goddess Sekhmet, and there happens to be an ancient lion sculpture right in the vicinity of the Great Pyramid. This video is all theoretical and was really made to give us something to think about, but I will be looking into the ancient Egyptian beliefs around the celestial pole in a future video. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.